what we're going to talk about today is actually highly debated in the uh, real estate guru community, and that's whether you should buy or rent your primary residence. So let me just go through with you what are some popular opinions out there uh, from some popular gurus. So should you buy or should you rent your personal residence? Well, you've probably heard of Grant Cardone. Um, he says that you rent where you live and buy where you rent. And he's got this notion where he says it's stupid. You'd be foolish to rent your own home because as an entrepreneur, you have to be mobile. I, I don't know if he's like trying to market to people or what he's trying to do when he says that, but like, I think he's giving people the idea that you got to be like out there, like shucking and jiving and flying around on helicopters and private jets and investing in real estate. It's just uh, kind of silly and it's not true. So I'm going to tell you right now that this is absolutely not true. Uh, I think that's a simple minded approach, um, but he pontificates this as like the ultimate wisdom. The other person is Robert Kiyosaki, who says in Rich Dad and Poor Dad that your home, your personal home is not an asset. And he's fighting conventional wisdom uh, where people used to think that buying your home was the, the biggest asset that you have. Now, the reason he says that is because of the definition of an asset. So if we're going into that, you know, should you uh, should you rent your home? or should you buy it? He says, well, your home isn't an asset because you know, an asset is something that pays you. And because your personal home doesn't pay you, it's not an asset. And I think that this is accurate, but it's also not taking into consideration some creative financing ways. And it's, it's not considering a few things. So here's my secret for the day. Uh, here's secret number two in our, in our real estate secret series. You should strategically own your own home. What do I mean by this? All right, so we went over the definition of an asset. An asset is something that pays you. A liability is something that takes money away from you. So the trick is to get your place where you live to pay you. Now, there's three reasons that I would consider, in three situations that I would consider your personal residence an asset. And here they are. Reason number one, is money saved is money made, right? So for example, this is the, uh, the second house that I actually bought um, and it would cost me to live in this neighborhood $1,200 a month to rent the house in the neighborhood. But you can buy the house and it would only cost me 850. All of a sudden taxes, insurance, everything would cost me 850. So I saved $350 a month. That's $4,200 a year that uh, can be used and was used to invest in other things. So money saved is actually money made. In that sense, your house can be considered an asset because you're actually saving money, right? Now, some people might not agree uh, with that definition, but at the end of the day, yes, money saved is money made, right? Because you could use that money to invest. Now, reason two takes a little more uh, creative thinking but if you strategically buy your home with equity in it, you can utilize the equity to invest. So just to give you an example, this particular house that I bought, it was uh, for almost $50,000, what it was worth, it was fixed up. Um, so I bought it using an FHA loan, which is a no money down loan. If you can get the seller to pay closing costs, they did. So I got into this house with no money down. This was right after Hurricane Katrina hit and uh, I was scrambling to find a place to live and uh, actually was still technically employed with my employer uh, with, the, with the school, but I wasn't moving to Houston to, to continue to teach there because we just were, were about to have a newborn baby. My wife wanted to be around the family. So I had to strategically buy something. And this particular house, as everybody's running to, to find places to live, uh, the housing started creeping up. Uh, people started relisting their houses. This is one of the only ones that didn't relist. So number one, I got it when the market was going up, but it was still listed for low. Number two, it had some updates that if I just put in some extra granite counters, if I put in some some new floors, um, if I if I just painted it, it would bring the value up a certain amount of dollars. So you can find a house that is discounted by just looking for something that you could possibly fix up. Uh, it might be a motivated seller. 
that is, uh, is, you know, for whatever reason, maybe they got a divorce, maybe they lost their job, maybe they're, you know, in bankruptcy or, or getting married or having children and need to move up. There's all kinds of reasons that somebody could be motivated and sell their house at a discount. So in order to do this, you got to find houses for motivated sellers that will sell at a discount. Um, but the market also went up because of the lower interest rate. So I ended up getting this house about $50,000 less than what it was worth. I immediately then went and used that equity. I pulled it out from the bank. It ended up being about 30,000 that I pulled out from the bank. And you can do this with several ways through the bank. You can do it with a cash out refi. You can do a home equity line of credit and you can do it with a home equity loan. Now you're probably saying, well, Ryan, that's great. You could take money out, but a loan isn't an asset. And that's correct. What I did with the money is that I used it as a down payment and an owner finance deal to buy a fourplex. Now the thing doesn't look pretty, but it was the golden goose that laid eggs, right? And so after all expenses, including paying off the home equity loan, uh, I was cash flowing $750 a month. So that brought me in $9,000 a year. The equity in the, the home was used to create an asset, right? So I took out equity in the single family home, used to buy the fourplex, and then I was ended up making, you know, a good bit of cash flow. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. What would have happened if I would have rented versus if I just bought it strategically like I did? So if I rented the home, I would have paid $1,200 a month. So I don't have the opportunity to build equity either because you know every money month that I put the money into the landlord, that's him, he's taking that money. Uh, that doesn't go towards the mortgage or, or paying down the principal. So I'm not building any wealth by paying down debt on a asset that has a certain value, right? Um, and so I don't have the opportunity to build equity either by paying down the loan or by forcing the value up, by doing those small renovations that could increase the value of the property. I don't have that opportunity when I rent the house. And then I bought it, it, it. So compare that to me buying the home and me buying the home. I saved $4,200 a year in not paying the rental prices in the neighborhood. I used the equity to buy that fourplex that made me $9,000 a year. All the while I had other people paying down my mortgage. So the total wealth creation just over a few years with these two assets that I used strategically buying my first house was over $250,000, okay? So my real estate secret number two is to strategically buy your primary residence. For this reason, what would you rather? Uh, have no equity, build no wealth, pay more money than it would cost to own or make $4,200 in savings, $9,000 a year in cash flow, pay that debt down with other people's money and create wealth? The answer is pretty obvious to me. Uh, reason number three, which is a little more creative and everybody's not able to do it. I certainly can't do it with my wife and five children, but you could utilize uh, short-term rentals this day and age to turn your personal residence into an asset. Some people rent out rooms and those rooms on the short-term rental market and those rooms surpass and actually cash flow what your cost is to hold the house in a mortgage. So you could end up making money by utilizing services like rent my couch, Airbnb, stuff like that. So in that sense, your personal residence can be turned into an asset. So that's the secret. Own your home by strategically buying it and give yourself the opportunity to create more, create more wealth by creative thinking utilizing equity, forcing values up. There's a lot of things that you can do to turn your home into an asset and not a liability. So guys, I hope you like this. If you did, please like it. Uh, if you found it valuable and you think other people will find it valuable, please share it. And if you're interested in getting started on our next cash flowing real estate deals, we do that five day challenge. We had tremendous success last time. You can go to that link right there, cashflow.life.com slash five day real estate challenge and you can get started there. All right, thank you for joining me for this session of Real Estate Investor Secrets. If you found this valuable, please help me out and give me a like, share it with anybody else who might find it valuable. And to make sure that you get the next secret right when it comes out, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on the Facebook group. 
Uh, for anybody who wants to get started on your next cash flowing real estate deal, at, whether it's short term rentals, Airbnb, single family, small multifamily or large multifamily, I can help you and we've had a ton of success in our five day real estate challenge program. Links and information to that is below. So if you want to get started on your next cash flowing uh, deal, then check out that link below. Thanks a lot and take care.